Okay, uh... Hey guys, you're probably wondering why do I have an iPad? Well, that's because I will be following a Bob Ross tutorial for today's video. <laughs> but then you're also wondering, wait, why, are, why don't you just have a canvas? Well, that's because I don't want to spend money on a canvas. <laughs> I don't want to spend money on paint, paintbrushes, on an easel. So I'm just going to work with what I have and do it on my iPad. But I feel like following a Bob Ross tutorial will be too easy. So I'm not only gonna be challenging myself to recreate a Bob Ross tutorial on my iPad, but I'm also gonna be following a Bob Ross tutorial with audio only. <laughs> but you know what, the thing is, I actually never watched a Bob Ross tutorial before. I actually never watched Bob Ross in general. <laughs> I mean, I've heard of him. Call me an uncultured swine, but I've heard of him. I've seen memes of him, but I've actually never watched him before. So I'm really doing this unprepared. To make it more challenging, I didn't want to go on YouTube and search up like Bob Ross tutorial myself because I feel like I would see the thumbnail and I would expect what the image would look like or what the painting would look like. So I asked my sister to send a video link to me of a Bob Ross tutorial that she'd want me to do. That way I wouldn't see the thumbnail at all. I wouldn't know what painting I will be following. I wouldn't know what colors to use and all that. So I'm really doing this blindly. With that link, I converted it into an mp3 file, like into an audio file. That way I could listen to the audio without looking at the visuals. So that's what I'm going to be doing today, but let's get started. So I have my laptop here and I have the audio ready. It's on my iTunes. I don't know. I did it illegally. <laughs> so if you guys are wondering what app I'm gonna be using, I'm gonna be using Procreate on the iPad. I feel like it's the closest app to do a digital painting. And yeah, let's get started. <laughs> Hello, I'm Bob Ross, and I'd like to welcome Hi, you to Bob. the tent. If this is your first time with us, I hope you grab a few paints and some brushes and come along and paint with us. <laughs> Let's have them graphically run all the colors across the screen that you need to do this painting with me. Wait, color? Wait, what color? Oh no! <laughs> I'm going to start off today with a, with a small amount of phthalo blue. Blue. And we'll just take and pull a little bit out and then tap Wait. the brush. Wait! I wasn't even prepared, but I had to pick my brush. I'm gonna choose the dry brush. If y'all are gonna follow me, uh, I don't know. Do you want us to use blue? Wait, I don't know what blue. Uh, let's choose, uh, let's choose that blue. That assures a nice even distribution of color all the way through the brush. Just tap it. Just tap like so. Let's go right up here. Now then, let's start right up in here and we'll use little, little crisscross strokes. Just make little X's. Where? Put in a happy little cloud, little sky. The sky. Okay, a little more of the color. Phthalo blue is very pretty, bright and shiny. Yeah. It's a happy color. There. Just continually use these little crisscross strokes. It just literally blends with the liquid white. Yeah. That easy. You have a quick little sky. <laughs> Let's add the least little amount of phthalo blue. Or phthalo green, I mean. Oh, green. So we have a small amount of the green. It's very strong. Let's go back up here. Maybe we'll have a little water in here. Water? So we'll just pull right across like this. Where? There. there. So you try to pull though from, from the outside in. If you start here and come across, it'll leave a great big mark. It's very hard to blend out. But here, all we'll do is just blend that together. And we wash our brushes with odorless thinner. Shake off the excess and then <laughs> just beat the other out of it. What was that? Let's make some big fluffy clouds today. Ooh, let's make. I'll go right into the titanium white with a one-inch brush. Titanium. Pick up the least little touch of the bright red. Very small amount. Wait, red or white? He said he's gonna take a little bit of titanium white and red. Okay, I'm gonna assume that he's mixing it. So I'm gonna use red. <laughs> I'm gonna use red. <laughs> let's use um, this color. Maybe there's a happy little clouds that just sort of float right around in the sky and have fun. Maybe what? he comes right off in here and goes off the top of the canvas, whatever. Oh, he said this wherever. This is your world. So let's do a fantastic little mount today. I'm going to take some black, black, some Prussian blue. Blue? Some Van Dyke brown. Brown? We'll put some alizarin crimson in there too. Be careful with the crimson or your mountain will turn. They wrote a beautiful song about purple mountains. Purple. Pull it out. We have a small roll of paint right out of the edge of the knife. There you go. Knife? Up here. Do I need a knife? Do I have a brush of a knife? <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna use a studio pen. Meh. Where's your mountain live? I think he's gonna live. He is now. Right there. Here? Maybe there's a bump there. Bump? You just sort of make a decision and I scrape off all the excess paint. Here I'm just really using 
firm pressure. It gets lighter at the bottom. Lighter? You can see lighter. the entire mountain. It's always lighter at the bottom than it is at the top. There we go. What? What the fuck? Normally it's easier for the light to come from the right side. Right side. So let's go right here. Touch, no pressure. Just the weight of the knife. No pressure. Let it float right down the side of that mountain. Look at there. Look at there. On this canvas, you have total power. Now we're following the angles on the other side of the mountain. Oh. Watch here. We'll come right here, and then I'll come distinctly through. Let's do this. Plastic paintings. Doesn't even look like a mountain. Yeah. Let's make some little footy hills back here. What? Give it a little greenish color. Green? Now part of it, let's say the little footy hill is right here. And all I'm doing is just tapping. Look at all the little, little things it makes in there. Looks like just the tops of not have to be difficult. Good dark color, should look black. Okay. Clean the knife. Look black. Maybe just some little evergreens that live back here in the distance. Just tap downward, tap it downward. And don't make them all like, real even, cause then they look like fence oh. posts down there. There. Not the traditional painter. One thing that used to drive me crazy was reflections. Watch your Just grab and pull down, straight down. Where the trees are taller, pull down a little further. Just go across. Good height on the knife. Cut in a happy little water line. Water. Blue. Be straight. You can go anywhere you want to go. It should be straight. Otherwise, your water's going to look like it's running right out of your painting. You <gasps> Whoa, it looks like water. Go mix up a bunch of dark. We'll take some of the midnight black, Prussian blue. Black blue. We'll even throw some Van Dyke brown in there. Brown? Some crimson, sap green. Just all the dark colors, basically. You know what? He said to mix all the dark colors. I'm going to put brown because I think that's what dark colors make, right? Wiggle it. Wiggle? Where? Wiggle it. Where? Bristles Wiggle? full and pull Wiggle. it. That makes it very sharp. Tell you what, maybe a happy little every begin working back and forth. Then we gotta put some arms on this tree. Gotta tree. Give him some little... Look at there. Look at there. Reload your brush for each tree. Each tree. And you sort of make those bristles bend downward. Downward? Isn't that fantastic? Yeah. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Let's have a third one there. We don't want them to get lonely. Let's make some leaf trees. To do that, we pull the brush through the paint, like so. Okay, we're making one trees. One direction. Okay. Get three. Pull it firmly through the paint. Okay. And that rounds one corner. See there? It gives it sort of a rounded look. Round. Yeah, it's round. Yeah. <laughs> just bend the bristles. See there? Yeah. And form your tree. Yeah. Here, all I'm doing is putting in some dark color. We'll come back and we'll highlight all these. I'll take some dark sienna. Wait, what's dark sienna? I'm gonna have some green. And we'll just put the indication of a happy little tree trunk here and there. Tree trunk? That easy. Give it a little sideward pull. Maybe there's some back in here. We don't know how many trees live in there. Put some old dead sticks and twigs on there. Okay. Twigs. Maybe there's a little tree trunk that lives right here. Where? Put these everywhere you want to Watch here. Oh, just anywhere. take the and scrape in all kinds of little things. When this trunk, right is all here. finished, some of these will show. Some of the liquid white, I'll go into white. yellow. And yellow. reach up here and grab some sap green. Green. Okay, so, so I'm going to send cad yellow, like neon sap green. green. And a little Let's put some leaves on this. This is what begins bringing this painting alive. Okay. Make little, little forms. Think about there's all kind of little individual limbs living in there. I'm just going to make a, like a nice tree. We can add some yellow ochre to that. Yellow. Put another happy little bush. Bush? What you think is the father's to wait first okay. and then work forward. That way you have layers of bushes. It's important. These layers create the illusion of distance in your painting. There's trees that live in here, so you have to sort of pick them out. Okay. There they are. See that? There it is. Just decide where trees live in your world. Put them in. I want to add a touch of the bright red here. Well, this, red. Will, this will make a nice one. Don't go too crazy with this red. It'll, whew, it's a fireball. And right in here, we'll have another little bush. See, but they're just layered one after the other. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing anymore. Let's take some Van Dyke brown. Brown. And let's go right in here. And maybe there's a happy little path. See how easy a little path is to make? Make a path here. There it goes. I'll make a path here. We're going to let him go around behind that tree. We don't know where it goes. 
goes right on around there and hides and very lightly, barely touched. There's a little blue in there too. Brown, white, touch of blue, it makes gray. Gray? Just put some highlight on there. Okay. Now then, down into the painting. Let me get another one inch brush here. A little bit of liquid white. Push a few little bushes that come right over it. Bush. And we just push that path right back. Look at there, it just disappeared. Let's sign this, we'll call it finished. I really hope you've enjoyed this and I thank you. Oh, we're done. We're Wait, we were done? Wait, I didn't know what he did at the last. He said he added sticks, so I added sticks here. I guess it's the finished painting. It looks better in camera. <laughs> Why does it look better on camera? <laughs> it actually looks good on camera. Okay, in real life, like if I look from here, like on the iPad, it doesn't look that good. But if I see it on camera, whoa. <laughs> Yo, I, I'm kind of proud of myself. Look at that, if I actually zoom it in, and it looks like a canvas. <gasps> this is my painting. I don't know if it looks the same as Bob Ross's, but I'm happy if, even if it doesn't look like Bob Ross's. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, if you did, give it a like and subscribe to this channel if you guys haven't already. And if you guys didn't watch my previous video, I will leave a link in the upper corner. And yeah, hope you guys have an amazing day. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye! Bye. <laughs>